Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today it's the beginning of the college football recruiting season and you're the head coach of a major football program who earns a high salary to exploit unpaid labor, but to do so, you must find ways to marshal all of the tools available to you, including donations from boosters, envelopes full of cash, and other impermissible payments to try to come out on top in the race for the most recruiting points. Envelopes of cash is for one to four players. It takes 60 minutes for a solo game and ranges from 90 to 150 minutes for the other player counts. Now it's for ages 13 and up and it's on Kickstarter right now. So I'm gonna show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are not final. These are prototypes. To see all the most up-to-date art and components, check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video. You're a head coach, and over 12 rounds, which are 12 months, you're going to be moving around in your bus to different regions of the United States. You're going to be trying to go to these different regions to recruit different athletes, which are going to give you a certain amount of stars depending on how prestigious they are, and those are essentially points. They're also going to be certain positions, whether it's defensive linemen or linebacker or offensive linemen, running backs, quarterbacks, you name it. Different positions, different recruits from around the states. Now you're going to be using forms of currency in this game to do different things. There's above the table currency or legal currency, which essentially is booster bucks, but you'll also be running envelopes of cash to different regions. And these cash will, you know, they go from one to six in value, but these are sort of the under the table types of things that you're giving these recruits in order to try to win their hearts. And thematically, these are different things as well. Like the gray is bling and the purple is a sports car with a scrub title. The blue is paying relatives overdue bills. Yellow is fancy clothes. Green is the classic envelope of cash and orange is high end whiskey. Now, not only are you getting points when you're recruiting certain athletes, but you'll also be getting points by being able to play certain cards throughout the game because they're gonna give you points right away as well. This is a very card-driven game. Also, at the end of the game, you're gonna get points for regional scoring, seeing how many recruits you got in each of the regions. The more you focus you have, the more points you'll get per recruit per region, but you'll also get points for positional scoring having many different positions because you're trying to field your whole entire team. Now as I mentioned the game is played over 12 rounds which are different months and each player is going to have a player board a couple of them of their color. So each month is going to go through some different phases. And in the final game you'll actually have these whistles that will use you to help track which month it is. At the beginning of the game each player is going to get six cards. They're going to keep four of them. Two of them are going to discard. Those will actually become in a draft pool you can get cards from later. But I did want to point out that some cards don't have art for them yet and there are going to be some pledge levels that you can actually get art of yourself on some of these cards. Now the cards that you've got in the beginning of the game that you kept, these are secret. They're a secret stash that you have that you can basically use throughout the game. Then each player is going to get two more cards and this is going to be at the beginning of each of the months. Uh, the start player actually gets three cards and then each player going in clockwise order has choices to make. Now one of them is you can play a card from your hand, which are one of the two you've gotten there. You would discard the one that you wouldn't play. Again, that's gonna be part of a draft pool that other players can pick from. Uh, but this card, when you get a card and you select one, you'll place that card in the current month under this. Now this card is not considered in play. It's essentially useless to you. It's just now you sort of have it. No one else is gonna get it. And this is something that you're gonna be able to activate over the course of the game. And when you do that, like paying one yellow and two orange envelopes of cash, it's gonna score you two points. But again, it's also going to score you an additional point for each time you sign a recruit. So this would be a great card to get early in the game if you're able to make it happen. But again, this is just you sort of like reserving this card. You're gonna to have to pay for it to actually put it in play later, we'll show you. Now, instead of selecting one of the two that you were given in your hand, you could select one of the cards that I showed you earlier that you got to be in a game that you drafted that you're able to have in your secret stash. Maybe you play one of these on your board, but you would discard both of these 
to the draft pool. Now let's say this is what the draft pool looked like. Instead of taking one of the two cards we were dealt this round, or one from the secret stash that we sort of selected at the beginning of the game, we could take one of these, because as players are not are taking cards other than the ones in their hand, they're being added to this draft pool, which is giving them possibly to other people. So you gotta be careful which ones you, you, you pick. So now, instead of picking one of the ones I was dealt or one, one of the ones in my secret stash, I could pick one of these. And by doing that, again, I would put it on my board for now. It's useless until I pay for it. But then the two cards that I was dealt this round would also go to the here. To, to this pool here. And so again, whatever you're not doing, someone else might be able to get up. Now that draft pool does actually reset and filter out and clear out about every three months. So like in the beginning of May, that draft pool will clear out. The beginning of August, it clears out. So it's not gonna just keep getting bigger, bigger throughout the game. It has a little bit of ebb and flow. And once it's gone around, everyone's done that and gotten a card, then you're going to roll the six different dice. And these correspond with the different colors of the, uh, the, the envelopes of cash. And so, here, players are simultaneously going to select any two dice. Players can select the same dice as others. There's actually a cutthroat mode for dice drafting where you, you draft in order and you take things and dice aren't available once you take them to other players. But in the standard game, each player can take two dice and they, each player can take the same two dice. It's just simply saying. Now this, for example, this shows you, well, this, is a, this is, consists of a yellow uh, envelope of cash. This also tells me you'd get two of them, but it also tells me when you'd get it. We're in March, so if this was a one, we would get one of those and they would go this month. Here's two. We could get two yellow envelopes of cash, put them in April where it says envelopes, and it would be, you know, worth two. We could get a gray one. It's going to be six of them, but it's going to be really far out, six months away. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, five months later, it'd be in August, for example. So you're constantly trying to think of timing and and how important is it now versus later because instead of taking this full amount let's say we wanted some gray ones but we we like six of them but we didn't want to wait so long for august we could take half of these and put them in any of this month or the next five so we could take three of these and put them in any of the other months, any single month. Well, here's the yellow ones. We could take one of those half and put it in this month, for example, and that, that means we'll use it. And if you took half of this, you round down, so we'd get one. But let's say the dice looked like this, and we decided to take these two dice, and we decided both times, instead of taking two, two months from now, or next month, or four in June of orange, I decided to take two, and one, which is half, and I decided to put them in any, I could put them in any single month. Uh, that could go in any single month like this, could go like this, but in this case, let's use this. So this way, I'll have two orange and one uh, yellow envelopes of cash that I could use this month. Then each player in turn are going to play out the month doing any amount of nine different actions. And by the way, the game comes with a really cool starting gold chain player marker uh, to, 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 so you can see who goes first. Now, of course, we would have had a card here from previously that we had selected. So let's say this was the card that we had selected. That's the reason why we had selected these is because we, this was something that we wanted to try to put into play. Because remember, when you select a card, it's not in a play yet. So one of the things you can do on your turn is put a card into play and you need to be able to pay this. So in this case, I have my one, I have my two. Uh, I'm immediately going to put this into play. These would get spent, uh, but I am going to get two points and this will go into play. Now players have a second player board, which are cards in play in the top half. And this now shows that we've paid for it and we have this ability. So now every time we score, to, uh, 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 you know, get a recruit, we'll score an additional point. And we'll show you the bottom of this board a little bit later. And as you score points, you're moving up the track in the upper part of the board. Now some cards work differently. Like this one only works at the end of the game, but again, only if you've been able to pay the envelopes of cash to put this into play, we each score two points for each region you recruited from. So you get that, you're gonna be running around and going to different regions. Here is like one time per round, you could spend one uh, purple envelope of cash to get one booster buck and optionally move your bus two spaces. So let's talk a little bit about moving as well. Now, each player is going to start in a certain region depending on their color. We're yellow, so we start here. Now, the first quarter of the game, or first uh, three months, you get three free movements, like one, two, three, for example. In the second three months, you get two free movements. In the, in the last three months, you get one free movement. But you could spend any kind of envelope of cash to move additional spots. So that's another reason why you might want to get those. And the cool thing about that is it doesn't matter what color you use. So again, that's going to help you in deciding which dice to take and things like that at the beginning of the round. Now, let's say we had you know, some more envelopes and we came here to Houston. So let's say we're in Houston. You can sign a recruit there if you want to, and you can. This one, it shows you the cost. This whole region here, if you notice, the cost is always yellow envelopes of cash because we're in the yellow region. This one's orange because it's an orange. But some of the regions 
uh, sort of border different spots. Like this one is bordering the gray area and the yellow area. So, so here it's going to be a, a you know two gray and two yellow if we were in, in you know this spot here uh, to get one of these two recruits. So let's say we just happen to still have three. You probably wouldn't have this in the first round, but three. Let's say we have three uh, yellow uh, envelopes of cash we got here. We want to recruit this running back. Now you would also uh, roll the modifier die, and this would tell you if it's plus one or minus one stars. So depending on this, so you're never quite sure what it's going to be. So it's, you can't math everything out. So this might modify this from being four up to five or down to three stars. But either way, let's just say it was zero. It came at face value you're going to score points for that. So you would score four points for that. Now we'll put those on our player mat. Now here it shows us we have a running back, great. And it shows us which state uh, we've gotten that from because there's certain cards that will allow you to benefit certain things depending on what state you went to and things like that. Now sometimes you might not have the exact type of envelopes of cash that you need. Let's say we needed one green, for example. You can always trade any type of three. So we have two blue, one purple and a booster buck. So three and a booster buck, you can get one of any type. So we can trade this in and we can get one that we really need. Another thing you can do is pay a runner because you don't get to keep any envelopes of cash from month to month. It's use it or lose it. So let's say we were forward planning. Maybe we wanted to go over here to this, this recruit in Louisiana, this defensive lineman with four stars, and we can send a runner to go do that. Now to do that, you got to pay the, the runner a booster buck that goes to the supply and you'd put the booster bucks uh, the the envelopes of cash next to that that you that that you're sort of like having the runner deliver and put your token on top of it so everyone knows that now you would do this if maybe you can't reach there and you had the full amount or maybe you're there and you don't have the full amount or any combination of that so we just do it just like that but if somebody else were able to come in and swoop in here and actually pay the full amount well you would lose this you know <laughs> the runner kind of already got it there and you don't get it back once per month, you can also run a marketing campaign and spend a certain amount of booster bucks, basically trading bucks for points. Now, if you got some envelopes of cash at the end of the round, you don't really know what to do with it, you don't want to send a runner, you can bet in Vegas. And for each envelope of cash that you do spend, so for example, let's say we spend one purple, we spend it to supply, we put our token on anything. It's You can bet on anything. I think it's going to be a three gray, right? And then let's say I spend another one and I say, you know, five blue. So it doesn't matter which ones you use, you can place them anywhere, but when those die are rolled, like let's say when all the dice are rolled, uh, you know, there is a five blue that comes up for when people are drafting the dice. I hit, anytime you hit anything, you get two envelopes cash of that color. So five blue, it matched, I get two blue envelopes of cash. So it's sort of like wagering, but then this gets cleared out. So it's sort of like you're betting for one month. So those are the different actions you can take on your turn. Once you're done with all your actions, it goes to the next player clockwise. And once everyone's done that, this will pass the next player and you'll start a new month. Now, by the way, there are aspects of this game that you can play sort of simultaneously, especially at the beginning of the game where players are not all right next to each other. For example, you start off pretty spread out. So the ability of you, you know, messing with somebody and getting some, something that somebody wants right off the bat is, is not that great. So you can actually do some of your actions simultaneously to speed up the beginning of the game. Now again, you're going through the different months and we talked about gaining cards and they're not really in play until you pay for them. And you do have a limited time for this as well because as you go through the months, if you get to August and you haven't yet used this, when you get to the beginning of this board again, you're in September. The card above this was from March. This would actually get removed. So you've got to be able to actually pay for cards. You have a good enough time to do so, but there is a timetable on when you're able to put that in play. You, don't just, you can't just sit on it for all 12 months. And that's pretty much it. At the end of the 12th round, you're going to do some final scoring, regional scoring. You're going to look at the region that you got the most state tokens from, and you're going to get a certain amount of points. If you got four, you'll get five points, for example. Uh, and if you get one of the ones that has a sort of a border token, the one that could be either, it could be used for either, but only one of those regions, for example. Uh, and that's one way that gets points. And again, another one is you look at how many different positions you have on your, on your team, and you'll get points that way as well. And don't forget there's many cards you might have to have some end game points, like three points for each border state recruit you sign, or one for every dollar sign card that you put into play. For example, 
these ones. Or maybe you get two points for each region you recruited from. So lots of different ways to score that way as well. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Now those are the basics of the game, but as you can tell, it's a, there's a lot of strategy in the game. A lot of it is the card play and the card drafting. Uh, now these state tokens were put out pretty specifically, but the, the, the positions were quite random. So you can look at the board, you can see where you're at, you can see which, which locations and types of players uh, you know, go well with the cards that you're trying to draft or the area that you're kind of focusing on. So you can build a strategy based upon the game randomly each, each game as well. Now there's at least 120 cards in the game and I haven't shown you nearly just basically a small slice of them, but here are some more cards that you may or may not have seen already in the game. Uh, and you can pause here to read what some of these abilities do. Well, there you have envelopes of cash, and as I showed in the overview, you only have 12 months to gather as many different recruits, so the tension between less income now versus income later plays a role in shaping your strategy. Should you jump out to a quick start and get the best recruits before your opponents, or should you build up a big stash of envelopes of cash and have a major blowout month towards the end of the year? Or can you build a strategy more around your personnel and culture, turning their special abilities into a victory point engine and leave the grubby business of bribes to others? Now, if you'd like to see the most up-to-date art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link right below me in the description of this video. Now, that's going to take you directly to the Kickstarter project page, and I'm sure the creator of Envelopes of Cash would love your support.